Welcome to the CompuAir Workbench File Aid Data Editor for DB2 Table Access Module. Here you will learn about the various options available to access your mainframe DB2 tables. Since the number of DB2 tables tends to be rather large, a filter is generally used to display a manageable list of tables in the Host Explorer. Upon selecting a table, a request box will appear. Among the choices here are viewing the entire table or just some of the rows and or columns and whether to browse or edit. When complete, the request is run and the table is displayed. The focus of this module will be filter specification and completing a request. Beginning in the Host Explorer, we select File Aid for DB2, right-click to display the context menu, and choose Add Filter. When the DB2 filter box appears, select a subsystem ID from the drop-down list. This list comes from the pre-configured list when File Aid for DB2 is installed on the mainframe. Next, enter the table creator and a table name. Note that a wildcard is used in this example. Also note that these names may be case sensitive. The filter and list of qualifying tables will appear in the Host Explorer directory. To proceed, either double-click on a table name or select a table, right-click to display the context menu, then choose File Aid Data Editor. A request box will appear. We will zoom in on three separate areas for a closer look. In the first area, there are two options for using selection criteria to display a row and or column subset of a table. In the second area, the user may type in a SQL statement to accomplish the same. The third area contains parameters relating to row counts and retrieval, as well as whether to browse or edit. Let's look at some examples. In the first example, we will use existing selection criteria contained in the PDS member shown. This would typically be something created previously, perhaps during a mainframe session. Let's have a look. Here we see that selection criteria must be in standard SQL format. Running the query displays the result shown. In the next example, we will build the selection criteria here, beginning with the Columns tab. By default, all columns are initially available, and this corresponds to the SQL Select All shown below. When the columns shown are selected, the SQL Select is automatically changed to Match. Selecting the Conditions tab, clicking on Select Field displays a list where we choose the Job column. Clicking on Select Condition displays the available conditions where we choose Is Equal To. Finally, we click on Enter Value and type in the value. Examining the SQL statement, we see that the condition just completed is mirrored in the WHERE clause. Selecting the Sorting tab, clicking on Select Columns displays a list where we choose the Salary column. Clicking on Sort Order, we choose Ascending. 
with the sort specification complete, another look at the SQL statement reveals that a corresponding order by clause has been added. Running this query displays the result shown. When a request is complete, you may want to save it for future use. That would begin with naming the request, then clicking the Save button. Saved request options are handled the same across all data types, that is for DB2, IMS, and MVS files, so you may be familiar with this topic. To learn about saved request options, or for a refresher, click on the yellow button. To proceed to the next topic, click on the green button. Saved requests are accessible from the toolbar. Clicking on the icon displays a menu similar to the one shown. There is a fine line dividing the list of requests with favorites above and recently used below. In this example, we click on Organize Favorites to display the dialog box shown, then choose Add. A list of all saved requests appears, and we have scrolled to the request just added and check the box before clicking OK. We see that the latest request has been added to the list of favorites. The list below the toolbar icon now contains the saved request and the submenu reveals that requests may be opened or run directly from the list. Note that the prefix icons identify the request type. In this example, we see IMS, MVS, DB2, and ZOS Unix. Also note the following about favorites and recently used lists. Opening or running a favorite request does not cause that request to be considered as recently executed. Conversely, adding a recently executed request to your list of favorites removes the request from the list of recently executed requests. The final item in the request area involves request maintenance and cloning. Choosing the Reassign option displays a box containing a list of existing saved requests. The list may be filtered by request type and or host and port. One or more requests may be selected for deletion or for cloning to another LPAR or reassignment to another LPAR. It may be beneficial to review the preferences governing your session. From the menu bar, choose Window, then Preferences. When the list appears, navigate to CompuWare, then choose File Aid Data Editor. On the General tab, review the options and make any appropriate changes. Select the DB2 tab and do the same. There are a few more items to note. First of all, multiple filters are allowed. Here we show two. Also, multiple tables may be open concurrently. Each will have its own tab. In the request box, there is an option to retrieve rows with uncommitted reads. Checking the box appends the with UR clause to the select statement. Also in the request box, the auditing option produces the same audit file type as file aid for DB2.
at the end of the audit session, the console view will contain the name of the audit file. Finally, there is support for the following. DB2 temporal tables, timestamp columns, and time zone columns. In this module, you have learned how to create a request to access and display a table. The display itself may be tailored for your convenience. Please view the display customization module. To learn about the many options available when changing table data, please view the data manipulation module. This concludes this module. Thank you.